To set up a drawing for site size, we're gonna need a few things. We want our printed image reference. This is an 11 by 14 printed image. We have a T-square, a pencil, masking tape, paper, this is just regular drawing paper, and a drawing board. So the first thing I wanna do is tape down my paper securely. We wanna ensure that there are no variables that are going to throw us off. So I like to make sure that the paper is square to the board. So I will tape both pieces of paper down with the same tape. Now I wanna make sure there's no bubbles, so I'm really gonna push this forward and try to flatten it out as much as possible. The two pieces of paper will ensure that there's kind of no uh, artifacts underneath that are going to affect our drawing. So the next thing we wanna do is to tape down our image reference. So I like to make sure that this is also square to the board. This is what I'm gonna be using my T-square for. I wanna make sure I have enough space for my drawing on the other side. So I'm gonna push this off to the left just a little bit more left than center just to be safe. Then what I wanna do is make sure that this image is square to the board. Then I will tape down all four corners. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is decide on a plumb line. So one of our first marks on our drawing and one of the most reliable is something called the plumb line. Now when this is up on our easel and we look at the plumb, it should be straight up and down and we're gonna make sure that our easels are level. But for now, what we can do is start out by choosing a plumb using our T-square. So for a plumb line, it's very helpful if it goes through important information. It will still be useful if I decided to choose this mark as my plumb line, that would still be useful, except the problem is, is that sometimes things that are far away from our plumb line tend to get a little bit more errors in them. So I like to make sure that my plumb line is going through important information. So I could choose the side of the nose. I could also choose where the neck meets the shirt over here. Um, I could choose the left side of the nose. Any of those options uh, give me great information throughout the entire face. I could also choose this kind of center line, the uh, tear duct information in here. I think I'm going to choose this point right here because it gives me a lot of great information kind of across the board. So personally, I don't mind drawing a few marks on my image here because I can kind of work around them. So I'm actually gonna use a ballpoint pen and draw almost a dashed line all the way down to act as my plumb. If you don't wanna do that, we can also tape a piece of string to create that same plumb. I find that this is easy to work around, so don't worry about if there's marks on your printout here. So there's my plumb line. Now, the important thing is here is that I need to have a plumb line over here that is perfectly parallel to this line. Now, how do we do that? We could just take our T-square and uh, arbitrarily find a spot and create a line and hope that it's parallel. That also assumes that our board is perfectly square. I don't like to trust that, so what I wanna do is actually take a measurement and ensure that my line is parallel. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a regular ruler 
and I'm going to, I, let's say I want to have my plumb line kind of, I want to make sure that A, I have enough space for all of my information so I can kind of approximate making sure. So I'm going to say it's going to be about, about here. So here's what I do. I take my ruler and I'm going to put the very end of my ruler on my plumb line. And then I'm going to find an easy thing to mark. So that's about 11 and a half is right here. Okay. So here's 11 and a half. So what I'm going to do is measure 11 and a half from up here, 11 and a half from down here and mark and mark. And if I measure perfectly and I connect those lines, it should also go through here. So then if I connect those two, it should go through the line, the original line that I marked. So I'm gonna go over this line a couple times because I wanna make sure I can see it. This line is never gonna move and it should never be erased. So here it did go through my 11 and a half measurement. So I know that this line is parallel to my plumb line. Now I'm ready to start drawing. Once we have our drawing set up and ready to go, and we put it up on the easel, we want to double check our easel to make sure it's level. So here we can see that the bubble's right in between those two lines. So yes, it is in fact level, and that should mean that our plum is also level. So working site size, you're, uh, there are some videos that the school offers for getting started with first marks. I just wanna go over a couple of the really awesome benefits of working site size. So if you choose to work site size with this, um, there's some added benefits. So when we work site size, the key is that we are drawing this at exactly the same size as the image. So the added bonus of site size is that every measurement you take over here should equal the measurement that you have on your paper. This is a great way to constantly double check yourself. So anything measured against the plum and the outside should measure exactly the same. Anything that's measured even internally, not relating to the plum, those measurements should equal exactly the same. So we often use wooden skewers to measure. So we're going to be measuring left to right and then we can double check our drawing. So at any point in our process of drawing, we can always double check with measuring directly off the image. This is a really awesome benefit to working from the flat and working sight size. The same measurement thing happens working from life, but it's a little bit harder because your measurements are a little bit less accurate from a distance. Uh, the, we're actually working directly off a of flat image, so we have the added bonus of being able to measure directly off, so vertical measurements, from the top to the turban should be exactly the same. Okay, so not only do our measurements uh, measure exactly the same from our drawing to the image, but the other extra added bonus to sight size is that everything lines up. So normally when we work comparatively or working at different sizes, we do check alignments because alignments is a great way to check yourself. So if you know, the tear duct aligns with the side of the nose on the portrait, then it should also in your painting as well. So we always do check alignments uh, across spaces and across objects, and we always check to make sure alignment. So, you know, the bottom of this, how does that align with information like the top of the lips, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but not only do alignments have to work here and here, but they actually pull completely across. So that means the top of your drawing is going to line up with the top of uh, the image. So this is, not only do we use our plum, our plumb line, it's a heavy weight at the end of a string, not only are we going to use that to check alignments across faces, but we can also flip it to the side and make sure things align um, across. So that when we say it pulls across, that this should align over here, the bottom of the chin should align over here. Uh, the turban peak should align over here. So everything pulls across. So that's an added benefit to sight size. Again, measuring should be exactly the same and everything should align across. So those are really 
uh, great things that help speed up the process. It's a lot of why I like to work site size. It's very convenient. Here's an example of the same site size concept, but set up in real life. So the items on the right hand side, obviously some of these are slightly modified in the painting, but in general, the larger information is all done from life. So if I take this skewer, so normally I'd use a uh, plumb line, you can kind of see how things pull across here. Uh, I did make the hat slightly higher in the, compos in the uh, final composition, um, but what I can do is show you how if I measure it's a little bit, again, our, our measurements from a distance are blurry, so that means that they're less reliable. But if I measure the height of the box and compare it to the height of the box, they should equal about the same. Same thing with left to right measurements, left to right measurements, and then uh, again, pulling across is that added bonus for site size. One of the challenges of working site size with image reference is how to get them securely next door to each other. We have a pretty thin mast here, so trying to support both of these things on this mast can be a challenge. So one thing I recommend is using either a drawing board or cardboard. So right here I'm using cardboard to support both of these uh, images. So this is my printed reference and it's taped down to a, a piece of cardboard that's the exact size and then I have my canvas panel. I have them both supported behind it with this piece of cardboard and then using binder clips just to keep them secure. That's a pretty nice way to keep everything solid uh, and able to be painted on. Uh, another way that I'll do this is use a drawing board and tape the photo reference directly onto the drawing board and then keeping a side of it open to have the painting leaning against it. That will serve the same purpose. A few things to note when you're working from the flat and working site size. When we work from the flat, we have the convenience of being able to measure directly off of our image and our drawing to check ourselves. However, I'd like for you to get in the habit of actually using your eyeballs as your main tool and not your measuring. Measuring can become a crutch. When we can measure directly off our drawing, it's very accurate and very convenient. However, this isn't going to last very long. Eventually, when we get to doing full sight size from life or even working comparatively, you really have to make sure that your eyes are trained for you to be able to make subtle adjustments and assessments on shapes, angles, and sizes. So a good way to train our observation is to work from the flat. So when you're working from the flat, stand when you're working on your drawing or painting. If you're standing, it gives you the opportunity to take a few steps back and use your eyeballs as your main tool, okay? So the habit I want you to get into is have everything up on the easel, everything's plumb and ready to go, and stand up at your easel, make a few marks, and then stand back and visually assess. Ask your eyeballs, do things look okay? Do the spaces look accurate? Do they look like they're the same size? Do things align and are angles okay? Then you can go up to the easel and double check with those really accurate marks. Keep in mind that our accurate measurements are only gonna last while we're on the flat. When we work full sight size, again, when we work full sight size, our measurements are not super accurate. Our arms can be shaky and we can't actually focus on our measuring tool and the object or person at a distance. So I don't want you to get too comfortable with those super accurate small measurements that are capable of working from the flat. Another thing that I'd like for you to take note of is that I'd really like for you to slow down. The more time that we invest in the early stages of a drawing or painting, the more it's gonna pay off in the long run. The more time you invest up front, the shorter the overall time will take. I promise you this. Uh, and then for if you're watching this for one of my classes, uh, the drawing stage, I usually only take this to what we call the cartoon stage. I don't do a fully fledged rendered drawing in advance for my paintings. My preliminary drawings really just go to this cartoon stage, which is a linear expression of what I'm drawing with some shadow shapes filled in. Typically a cartoon is the light and dark pattern uh, fully articulated. Now the complexity of this drawing actually depends on the complexity of my subject. If I've drawn the object before, then I feel pretty comfortable with being able to push paint around on the canvas to find the drawing. So my drawing is gonna be, my preliminary drawing is gonna be much more simplified. 
However, if I'm going to be working on an object or setup that's very complicated or perhaps th a lot of things in perspective that I haven't really uh, fleshed out before, then I'm going to take a lot more time and effort in articulation in the drawing. It's not that I'm always going to transfer all of this information and be married to it. It's more for my own familiarity with the objects or people that I'm drawing. So that preliminary drawing really isn't necessarily about being married to that drawing. It's more about the familiarity for myself for when I go to paint. Paint is a very difficult medium to work in when you're drawing. But as representational painters, really when we paint, we are drawing. If you're looking for more feedback or instruction with drawing, I recommend looking into your local atelier or academy, like the Academy of Real Estate Boston, where I teach. Oftentimes, they're gonna be working from the flat to start you out as well.